Item number SCP-4497 Object Class Keter Security Level 3 Special Containment Procedures Due to SCP-4497's metaphysical nature, it is contained within an individual designated as SCP-4497-1. This individual is to be housed within a humanoid containment cell at Site-19 as long as they maintain this designation. In the event that SCP-4497-1 loses the mantle of SCP-4497 and demonstrates no further anomalous traits, they are to be debriefed and returned to the general population. Prior to any periods of rest, which may include sleep, SCP-4497-1 is to be interfaced with the sanderson cosby Interpretive Dreaming Matrix, Mark IV. Codename Skip Mark 4. In order to broadcast and record interactions relevant to SCP-4497, the use of MTF Omicron Row, the Dream Team is authorized to facilitate the reacquisition of SCP-4497 should the current instance of SCP-4497-1 lose the mantle to an uncontained challenger. Update. Upon initiation of this article, SCP-4497 was classified as safe per the events of Incident Log 4497-2. Update. Incident Log 4497-3. The object classification has been amended to Euclid. Update. Keda. Description. SCP-4497 is a metaphysical mantle which imparts supernatural knowledge and skill within the domain of culinary arts. These affected by SCP-4497 are intimately aware of the breadth of their ability and skill and demonstrate highly competitive tendencies in an effort to exercise the nature of SCP-4497-1. This colony omniscience leads to any material which is even theoretically edible and capable of processing through the use of culinary utensils. Through anomalous means, the use of SCP-4497 permanently alters these processed materials into a non-toxic and human edible state. Upon entering REM sleep, subjects designated as SCP-4497-1 report waking into a persistent and shared dreamscape, superficially bearing a resemblance to a sports arena or stadium. The center of the arena contains a variety of utensils and equipment common to cooking and baking, where SCP-4497-1 is pitted against a challenger for the right to wear the mantle of SCP-4497. This challenger is conceptually update designated as SCP-4497-2 and has, to date, been a unique individual during each recorded observation. While some instances of SCP-4497-2 have later been identified as members of the public, the majority of instances have been catalogued as members of QI-31, the Honor Roy. The challenge putting SCP-4497-1 against SCP-4497-2 proceeds in a predictable and ritualistic fashion. Each participant is presented with a theme ingredient and encouraged to make a creative dish utilizing this theme ingredient with an arbitrary time constraint. Should SCP-4497-1 be defeated by SCP-4497-2, the mantle of SCP-4497 will immediately be transferred into the new host, and the previous instance of SCP-4497-1 will be immediately and permanently ejected from the dreamscape. An ejection from this dreamscape appears to permanently damage a person's ability to achieve REM sleep, and no attempts to restore this ability have so far been unsuccessful. Discovery Log Dateline 2019, December 12th Containment Specialist Dr. Manny Eats notified Site-19 staff that he had encountered a known member of GOI-31 Honoroy during an attempt at lucid dreaming. This entity was non-hostile and self-identified as the Lord Mayor of Flavortown. Contact with this entity 
later led the specialist to receive an invitation to Kitchen Stadium, which is believed to be the origin point of SCP-4497. Specialist Eats was invited to participate in the ritual challenge, and he proceeded without prior approval. The specialist notes that his predecessor and the holder of the mantle, SCP-4497-1, was an ambulatory two-meter-tall mason jar accompanied by a single gherkin-style pickle suspended in an unknown fluid, which identified itself as the flavor elevator. Dr. Eats defeated the champion in a battle themed around yellow cake uranium. The doctor was not allowed to taste, see, or perceive the champion's dish, but reports that he created a yellow cake curry featuring potatoes with actual eyes and a high meat of megafauna of unknown origin and type, but superficially resembling a Rhode Island red chicken. After assembling the mantle and becoming SCP-4497-1, Dr. Eat reports that he awoke to discover the following feedback was flagged as having mentioned him on the Honorable Hosted Yo.SLP Review Site. Yo! Dot SLP reviews. At Literary Judge 1, 5 out of 5 stars, I can merely feel at the inner glow of your curry irradiating every capillary within me. This curry, like a cancer grows, I know of the death of me, but I can only hope my ancestors find me worthy. I go to face them with my belly full, heart happy, and DNA thoroughly denatured. At Publicly Judge 2, 4 out of 5 stars. I could almost count the eyes on the potatoes as I devoured your curry. I enjoyed this immensely, but I am French. 4 out of 5. At Theoretically Judge 3, 5 out of 5 stars, plus 2 extras. Publicly Judge 2 is a beep and a beep, who I wrote down for every time I perceive her. Unbelievably crappy conduct for a judge of this most prestigious competition to arbitrarily apply some sort of crappy constraint or hidden criteria to their grading. Does she think that she is the only one who can do this? I'm going to show her what an infinitely dense Belgian waffle can do. Here, chef, I want you to have some of these here extra stars. My arbitrary and hidden criteria are superior to hers. Incident Log Dateline 2019, May 28th. During a scheduled employee morale event, SCP-4497-1 had provided Apple Brown Betty. Note, a traditional American dessert made from fruit and sweetened crumbs, similar to a cobbler or a crisp. For consumption, a level 3 researcher named Jack Carmichael remarked that his version of the dessert was superior to the one produced by SCP-4497-1. Upon hearing this declaration, SCP-4497-1 challenged researcher Carmichael to produce his dessert and subject it to a contest by popular vote. For reasons of morale, this contest was allowed to continue under the supervision of the lead researcher. By the final count of 23 to 17, Jack Carmichael's entry for Apple Brown Betty defeated the entry of SCP-4497-1 and a mantle unexpectedly transferred to the new victor via competition in real space. SCP-4497 has been upgraded to Euclid. Incident Log Dateline 2019 November 2nd During a scheduled update regarding ongoing and unrelated matters, UIU field agent Daniel Pelushi attended lunch in the Site-19 cafeteria. As per Site-19 morale policy, SCP-4497-1 had prepared potatoes au cordon to accompany the main course. Site Director Sanderson questioned the visiting agent as to whether or not he enjoyed the food and he offered the following remarks, which are recorded. Reminds me of my Nona's recipe. Not quite as good, of course. But pretty damn close. On the evening of 2019, November 2nd, during the regularly scheduled recording, it was noted that SCP-3497-1 was no longer able to enter REM sleep. 
A signed D-Class personnel were dispatched into the dreamscape and confirmed that the defending champion was represented by a retro form spectral entity identifying itself as Nona Pelushi. As the object appears to now respond to decorative subjective comparison, SCP-4497 has been upgraded to Kedda. Field Log 4497-4 Operation Snackdown Dateline 2019, November 4th, MTF Omicron Row, the Dream Team, was interfaced with Skid Mark IV in an attempt to reacquire SCP-4497 via competition. MTF forces are equipped with subdermothermic ziggles, which allow for cooperation at near-instantaneous subconscious speeds between all attuned individuals. MTF Captain Boris Sokolov entered himself as the challenger, SCP-4497-2, and declared the following members of his MTF as his sous chefs. SCP-4497-1, Nona Pelusi, manifested in order to defend the mantle of SCP-4497. Begin recording. The point of view of the Skid Mark IV device had been forcibly altered to an overhead camera which sweeps down onto the stadium from a previously unseen vantage point before settling behind the shoulders of SCP-4497-1 and SCP-4497-2. Both contestants stand at the foot of a die looking up at an obsidian altar covered with a large metal dome. From around the altar appears a floating reniform, kidney-shaped, yellow-white mass extruding numerous tentacles. Its tentacles vibrate as it speaks. Ladies and gentlemen, things and thonks, welcome back to another thrilling, gripping, intriguing battle at Kitchen Stadium. Last week, our new thinky time man walk was christened with blood as Nona Pelusi defended her title against the ravenous bug beast of Seta Vatikoli Illa in Battle Chatu. What surprises did this week's charges bring with them? What morphological and existential horrors will this week's special surprise theme ingredient present? Let's find out! The camera zooms in past the contestant. As it does so, the yellow-white mass the host transforms into the viscous brown globular substance which disperses and scatters to various off-screen locations. Afterward, the metal dome races via unknown means to reveal a table of various apparently human corpses dressed in 15th century European clothing and bearing religious paraphernalia. Battle of Spanish Inquisition! The audio is filled with gasps, ooh, and ah style noises, applause from unseen sources, and general cheering from the off screen crowd. Alternative camera angles cut to contestant as they each nod in approval and excitement. SCP 4497 2 offers a polite clap. Remember, contestants, the rules are simple. You will have 3.6. E plus 15 picoseconds to provide the council of judges with the most scrumptious interpretation of this choice ingredient. One appetizer, one main course, and one dessert. The 3.6 E plus picoseconds of Spado Spanish Inquisition begins now! Multiple camera angles cut to a brief conference led by the MTF, wherein Agent Sokolov thinks through his menu and his two chefs and divides up the duty. Thanks to the instantaneous thought form communication facilitated by the subdermal seagulls, this task is completed in mere moments, and Agent Sokolov and all three of the Sioux chefs mutualistically clap their hands together in unison as they break. SCP-4497-1 and Agent Sokolov begin to heap portions of the secret ingredient into large woven baskets and to transfer whole corpses onto nearby gurneys. As this plays out, the audio fades and voiceover begins an apparent advertisement. Today's secret ingredient was graciously provided by distant memory of the Finland Star Brand Farms and their associates. The good folks at distant memory of a far long star Toil every day, screaming on the underside of existence, so you can enjoy the 
freshest inquisitorial corpses and memorabilia without any of the anachronistic risks or the constant threats of patricide. Feeling a bit heretical, nibble and inquisitor. As the voice over fades, kitchen audio resumes and the sound of numerous devices in action fills the ear. Several trillion picoseconds have already elapsed as the camera briefly flashes to the countdown clock. Dramatic music underscores rapid camera cuts as SCP-4497-1 demonstratively instructs the two sous chefs as they treat and prepare the secret ingredient. Likewise, on the other side of the arena, SCP-4497-2, led by Agent Sokolov, occasionally weathers the look up from their labors in order to make eye contact and nod to one another as commands are instantaneously exchanged. The battle continues to progress with increasingly aggressive and bombastic edits, graphics, and music. Multiple rapid cuts and close zooms of the contestant faces are arrayed over the dramatic thumbs of a pipe organ as they chop ingredients, activate food processors, and rotate frying pans. The host floats over top the arena, encouraging the contestants onward as the clock nears zero. 6E plus 13 picoseconds remaining, you should be plating by now. The chilling of the crowd continues to escalate as the deadline draws near and a blaring clockson declares that the cooking time has finally ended. The previously bright white light of the stadium is replaced by an ominous and deep red light as the contestants bring their prepared dishes to set before the council of judges. SCP-4497-2, the challenger, presents first. The camera is tight to his face as he begins to speak. All right. As tonight, I want to prepare you a con a journey that really speaks to the true flavor of the Spanish Inquisitor. So I've kind of taken us on a journey of all the most heretical flavors that Europe has to offer. I want to to kind of play off of that and really set this beautiful Inquisitor be the star of the show. I hope you enjoy. The camera slowly rolls left to right, showing off the agent's dishes. Okay, first we have our advertiser. This is a callback to the greatest heretics of southern France. With our take on a sort of naughty day board, we have a thinly sliced, nice and fatty inquisitor belly that's been dried in a Dead Sea marinade, and then just real quickly being ate over the conceptual essence of a torturous rack. I'd served a thin, crispy, compressed slices of Conno Lecturus beard. The cheese is sharp cheddar for the mere Mogoris region of Luna. And... Wine isn't wine at all. It's distilled heresy, which turns out are the same properties and flavor profile of Benor Nor. Various cuts to the judges are interspersed as they begin to eat the appetizer. The first judge appears to be a direct representation of Alexander Hamilton, except he's a two meter tall Komodo dragon. The second judge is the one meter wide disembodied head of Salvador Dali, his mustache twisted into a Mobius strip. And the third judge is a completely hairless Guy Fieri, adorned with sunglasses. The judges appear to enjoy the meal, but are sparing the commentary for later. For our main course, we wanted to stick to the namesake's Spanish roots. We took the Inquisitor's thighs, wrapped them in logical vestments, which we had soaked in sherry, then just finished off with a rub of ground as de peppers, cumin, saffron, and ground teeth, and then we just seared that real quick over the same open fires we used to roast the feet of the heretics for our side dish. Speaking of, we have some cracklings made from heretics' feet, and we just left those out to confess to the heresy for almost the entire hour, and merely let them run it down and crisp up. Enjoy! There is another brief cut to the judges, as they enjoy the heretic cracklings. They nod to each other, as they pay particular attention to the crunch. And finally, for dessert, we call this one 
plenty indulgence, which we're all quite proud of. Uh, for you, a sort of French-style upside-down apple dessert infused with rich and decadent purple authority. This is served warm, with a caramel-flavoured reformation sauce and a dollop of vanilla custard ice cream. They took a real risk here. It's just plain, no totally normal vanilla custard. Well, I for one... I want to thank you for this delicious and colorbalistic journey. I really had a good time touring Europe with that succulent taste of heresy that the Inquisitors were after. I feel I was there, in a castle, burning witches until they confessed. Very good. Figuratively striking. Tastes very absurd. But a lot of what you put up today was very real. You didn't ask me to imagine a single thing for you on this entire menu. I'm not sure that's worked out in your favor here, but we'll see. Overall, strong. Just not a lot of risk being taken. Okay, thank you for your feedback. This was totally a bad cool smackdown of fleet for bonanzas all up in our grills, and I just can't go for how knocked out dynamite this totally ordinary and completely mundane custard is. Seriously, I could dive right in. I could go out to my car, open your glove box, try on my oldest goggles, because those are closer to the handle, toss them out, then reach in and fish for my diving goggles, and put those on, come back inside, return to the table, go down into the arena, strip down to just my underrules, pucker up real tight, take a deep breath, and just dive on into Flavor Central. Okay, then that bowl of custard you got back to the other station. Just incredible! Wow, thank you. I appreciate that a lot. Honestly, I'm honored to have been able to serve you this meal. It's really been a pleasure to work with such ingredients. The table is cleared, and many fast added swipes indicate the passage of time as the incumbent SCP-4497-1 presents their meal. Nona Lucy, please explain your meal. Well, my dearies, as a woman that has been dead for nearly ten years, this one was a real challenge. First, my appetizer is a cold mushroom salad tossed with fenugreek. The mushrooms are grown from fields, fertilized with a mixture of bone meal and ash of heretics, and then they were pressed between copies of mal this malfunctum. Until nice and thin, the marinade and dressing are a mixture of olive oil, charlotte, garlic, the reticence of the clergy, and a dash of increasingly brutal prosecution with that extra kick. The camera similarly features the judges eating the salad and making a variety of highly conspicuous and approving faces. I call our main course Poca Dio. We have cured and snow cooked long pigs tossed in the great fee of inquisitor fat, disregarded facts, and thinly hailed political agendas extracted from Renaissance era royal court. To go with that, we have a tangy mango slaw and a nice potato roll to make your own sandwich. You'll be screaming poker deal for sure. Get yourself right on that heretic's list. <laughs> Camera cuts to a long shot, showing all three judges laughing and smiling politely at a joke. Guy Fielder looks nervously to the disembodied head of Sovereign Dali before dabbing his napkin on his suddenly very sweaty brow. Ahem, ahem. Now then, finally for dessert. Unfortunately, since I am just one woman, I wasn't quite able to get everything on the plate that I had hoped before time ran out. Those pico seconds really flew by. This is my grandson's favorite dish. Potatoes al garden. Enjoy. I'm having a hard time tasting the Inquisitor in this, Nona. Where is it? That was the thing I had trouble getting on the plate, sorry. So the one thing that needed to be here, you didn't even attempt to work into a dish that you served us? That's correct. I love it. So subversive. Thank you, concussant. You can go back to your station while the votes are tallied.
Dramatic music researchers as the camera drifts upwards and away from the console of judges. As the camera continues to drift upward, it becomes clear that the contestants are moving in real time. However, the judges are experiencing some sort of localized temporal anomaly, such that the debate has been sped up to mere seconds rather than minutes. After approximately 30 total seconds of real time, the temporal anomaly ends and the host assumes center stage. The contestants approach and stand before him at the foot of the die. Iron Chef Nona Perusi, SCP-4491-7, bows to the host. Challenger Bo is Sokolov, SCP-4497-2, bows to the host. The votes are in, and the winner of this battle Spanish Inquisition is... The Challenger Boris Sokolov! The camera immediately cuts to Agent Sokolov as he blushes and the Sioux chefs rush in to congratulate him. Agent Sokolov crosses the aisle and attempts to shake SCP-4497-1's hand, but a spectral entity disperses and an ectoplasmic ether as her final pain screen momentarily eclipses the cheering and applause. Credits begin to roll as Agent Sokolov is handed a black chef's jacket embroidered with his name. The screen fades to black as he puts it on. End recording.